And the first thing Michael tried to decipher was the celebrated Faustos disk. It had nothing to do with linear B, but it was an exercise in decipherment. He told me later that he'd been punished for doing it in somebody's class, and he thought that was a great joke. So in 1940, Michael had an article published, didn't he? Uh, yes, it was an article called Introducing the Minoan Language, and it was published in a very prestigious American scholarly journal. He was only 18 at the time, and I remember that he wrote me an accompanying letter saying, I didn't tell them how old I was, nor how little I knew about the subject, but I think they were fooled all right. So what happened to Michael after he left school? Well, I had a letter from him in December 1942. By that time, he'd been called up and was training to be an Air Force pilot. But he hadn't lost interest in his decipherment problem. He says, I heard from J.L. Myers a month or two ago, who wanted to know if I'd made any more progress with the Minoan problem. I had to admit I hadn't, but we've been having a very interesting exchange of views. So what happened after the decipherment? Well, it, he had reported to me now and then the progress that he was making. And when he reached the final results 16 years after the exhibition, he sent me a paper about it and scribbled on it, not quite the Greek you taught me, I'm afraid which was very typical of Michael's detached sense of humour. How did you feel? I felt uh, a considerable uplift to think that so important an event had resulted from such unexpected beginnings. A tiny seed that you had planted. Yes.